How you doing? I'm Mark. Hey, I'm Danny. I'm Glenn. And we are The Script. Yes. Yeah, Very we, good. we arrived yesterday. Um, again, the jet lag is kind of kicking in around now. But yesterday we got the chance to walk around uh, a little bit. We went and took a taxi down to Rapungi, um, went into a restaurant, um, which I think was a really good one. Um, there was no Westerners there, so you know it's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I noticed that um, a lot of the people, the last time I was here, everybody was wearing the white thing around the face, but this time, not so many people. I think they are, they, you had an epidemic last time we were here. Um, but things I noticed, um, not, not really crazy, you know, because we've only just been down the same path as we were before, yeah. but um, I think the infrastructure's changed a little bit. You've got a lot, a lot more cool, cooler looking buildings in the eight years. There's one or two that I was like, oh, I didn't see that before. I'm always surprised uh, at how clean the city is. Yes. It's absolutely beautiful and spotless. Uh, from, from the hotel to the road to the thing, no dirt. And I think that's beautiful, you know. Mm. In, in Ireland, England, you know, all this place, the roads are filthy, there's litter everywhere. Yeah. There seems to be, I don't know, with just a, a bit of pride about the place, you know. I think you have the cleanest airport that I've ever been in. He and literally I, ate his dinner off it the other day. I did, I put my dinner on the floor and I ate it and it was clean. It was kind of 2005, and um, I'd met Glenn in Dublin. Uh, to try to make it shorter, uh, met Glenn in Dublin, invited him to America where my, myself and Danny were, uh, were living. And we were living there for, I'd say, the bones of 10, 11 years. And um, Glenn came over on, just for a holiday. We decided to get into the studio and just make some music together. We, we didn't plan on being a band or anything like that. We were just making music together. We made about four songs, three, four songs, and myself and Danny went to some uh, friends we've got in the industry. They, they At the time, they had just started a, a record label and signed a couple of artists. And um, I just played them the music. What, what, what I was actually thinking what was gonna happen was uh, we were getting Danny, uh, trying to get Danny a, a deal as a solo artist. Um, but actually, the guy said, um, this is a really cool band, who are they? And we basically just lied and said that we were a band and that we were called a script. And they loved it, and I called Glenn and said, Glenn, they, they think we're a band. And, um, and he goes, okay. And I said, do you wanna be in a band? And he said, yeah. So it was a bit of an accident. It wasn't something that was extremely planned. Um, but I think what's great about fate is that it's not planned, is it? It's, it's something that, it, it just happens. And um, when you're not looking for something, it does fall in your lap. And they say, what, what is for you will not pass you by. And that's exactly what happened with the script. Yeah, yeah. It's over a few days, really. Yeah, you just yeah. put like a hit list of about forty names down. And it was I the one we least hate the most. <laughs> yeah, it was the one that we <laughs> least laughed at the most. Do you know what I mean? Because I mean, naming it a band is like naming a baby. Everybody has something to say. Like you know, as soon as you mention it, and then you start to rhyme all the things, the bad words that you can rhyme with your, with your band. <laughs> Script shit. Mm. Uh, with all these ones, but um, now it just seemed to be the uh, the one that stuck. And I think, as, as Mark said, with Faith, um, the songs themselves were, you know, they all have mini stories and plots and themes through them. So the script, in retrospect, was an amazing uh, name for the band. Uh, honesty. The, the, yeah, honesty is, is the number one thing for us. We, we want to be honest about everything. And I, I think in a day and age where men um, are n not very uh, open with their feelings, and I think it's difficult for men to be open with their feelings. I think we are three guys that has managed to uh, be um, completely open with our feelings, and um, that's something that's unique as a male. So I think it, 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 uh, it helps us speak from a male perspective all the time. And oddly enough, there's so many men out there now that uh, have said to us, you know, we say in three minutes what they've been wanting to say in their whole lives sometimes to people, and they use our music to speak for them sometimes and, and uh, we're really incredibly proud of that because you know young boys and men in general can bottle a lot up and harm themselves because of that and, and in any way shape or form but yeah it, it's a it, the honesty as Dan said is the number one thing for us is to be honest all the time but of course um, against the backdrop of modern music that it, it that is hard to shine through so we're a band that I think you find us when you're broken unless it's Hall of Fame it's a 
I'd say it's energetic, um, triumphant, um, but also emotional. You know, I think um, it kind of it sums up as like little bits of all our albums there as well. You know, that we've got those triumphant Hall of Fame style songs like Superheroes. We've got those kind of the ballads like um, Man on a Wire and uh, and um, No Good and Goodbye. Which you no know, good and good boys kind of break even kind of, you know it's like it's almost like a best of the three albums all put into one album, um I just think the themes are really important, and actually just the last interviewer had said that this feels like it doesn't feel like you're trying to just say these words that people that are trying to put together it's like you're talking directly to somebody directly to your fans, this is what you should do or if you're not doing this then you should do this or this is how I feel how do you feel. You know, if you don't feel good about it, then change it. You know, so there's a lot of questions we directly ask to the listener, I think, um, which I think can be can be good and can be bad. You know, some people don't want to realise that I might be living in a wrong relationship or I might be in the wrong job or um, or stuff like that. But but also there are people there who, who listen to superheroes and say, that's my mantra for the next four or five years. I and mean, that's what my running song or that's the song I'm, I have had on repeat while I'm studying for my exams or... Or even you know there was a, a friend of ours who's going up with the equal um for for gay rights, and he, that's his mantra. He loves the tune. Now he's just like you know you've been fighting for all your life. And it's weird. It's weird because we write for a different reason. Someone else comes along and, and yeah. I see what it means to him, and I go, oh, that's fucking amazing. That's really cool that you've taken that song and put that meaning on it. You know, um. But I think yeah, the album, as I said, those those three things. How you doing? I'm Glenn. Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Mark. And we are The Script and you're watching TV Groove. Um, we want to say to all our Japanese fans, thank you so much for uh, your continued support. Uh, I know it's been six years since we've been here. Um, it will not be another six. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for keeping us on your shoulders and supporting us this whole way. Um, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Good night.